in other words, you can kill a revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution. You can't kill the revolution. And, and there's some beautiful things. Uh, I don't know if you all know Ngugi, the writer out of Kenya. Uh, he's written a uh, play called The Trial of Didan Kamanti. Uh, if you get a chance to pick that up and read, it's beautiful because it's basically, you know, the witnesses and the people on trial of Didan Kamanti and just the, the resolute, uh, you know, consciousness of these people. Of course, it's fictional, but it's, it's beautifully written. If you ever get a chance to look at it. So he's one of our, uh, our warrior kings. A lot of you know Nzinga. Now you see different, we don't know what Nzinga looks like, but I had imagined that she looked, I had imagined that maybe she didn't look like this, but that she had this look. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it captures something. It captures something. So in Zynga, uh it's Angola, but at the time, Ingolo, Ingola means king. And of course the Portuguese were there and they always messing things up. It became Angola, but she was famous for her resistance with the Portuguese not only during the enslavement process or trying to stop all of that, but also, you know, they just wrecking the culture. And it was a lot of, of course, um, she had a lot of internal struggles, of course, as they always do. And people put a lot of attention on the things that she did domestically in terms of fighting among, you know, some of the other folks. But sometimes you got to fight among your folks, yes. get yes. things straight yes. so you can do yeah. the big do the bigger battle yeah. so y'all know how that yeah. goes yeah, that's okay. so that's uh in zynga and you of course a lot of you've heard of where you can get more information uh, this uh, this is uh, a, a local man you know i try to make sure i incorporate ghanaian history so we're here in ghana i can't put it all ghanaians but we have to represent so we have nkrumah you've seen you've seen yaa santiwa and, mm -hmm. and uh, nkrumah is an enzima which is an akan uh, Yaa Santa was an Ashanti, which is an Akan. Um, Cornelius Ajete is a Ga. Okay. But Cornelius Ajete and two other men, uh, Sergeant Atepo and um, uh, I've forgotten the other one. I, I haven't given this presentation for a couple months, so I've slipped my mind. But anyhow, uh, they were World War II fight soldiers. And they were supposed to be getting their due from the British in terms of compensation, okay, back yeah. pay, all of these kinds of things. And of course, as they do, they reneged. Now, him and his unit had fought in Burma and, and alongside him, being really instrumental to the, the British, you know, winning, being partial victors in World War II. But when, he, when these men went with other men to march on the capital to get their due, uh, this uh, Major Imray, I-M-R-A-Y, mm -hmm. a European, just lost control and then shot into the crowd and shot a lot up. These three were killed, and I think another 60 or 70 injured. Mm -hmm. And this brought on the Accra riots. Mm -hmm. And when the Accra riots came on, that's when things become unglued. They started arresting everyone, so when you may have heard of the Big Six as you travel around mm -hmm. Ghana. They, you know, with Nkrumah, of course, uh, main part of them arrested these people, and, and eventually they had to let Nkrumah out. But the point is, this is one of the, this is the event that really began to bring this anti-colonial struggle mm -hmm. to a head. Mm -hmm. So uh, we honor uh, Sergeant Ajete and the men who were with him. He was the leader of the three, so we, you know, we give props to the leader. But uh, they are the ones, as usual, that ignite these things and then talented politicians and uh, come along and take it to the next level. Maurice Bishop, mm -hmm. yeah. now I know a lot of y'all voted for Ronald Reagan back in the day, no. but, but you shouldn't have. <laughs> Maurice Bishop, uh, <laughs> the actor, you know, with his little monkeys and all that. But anyway, uh, Maurice Bishop, some people will call him the uh, Fidel Castro of Grenada. And if, you, if you, a lot of y'all remember back in 1983 when in, in, uh, the U.S. invaded Grenada, a country of less than 100, you know, the whole country could fit in a Rose Bowl. You know, but they had to go in there because mm -hmm. there was such a huge threat supposedly yes. putting in this long um, runway and all that. But anyway, Maurice Bishop, before that, just before that, had uh, started what they called it. He didn't start, but he was one of the instrumental people in the New Jewel movement, which was just a social, economic, political movement of the people in Grenada. So they became very quickly self-sufficient, you know, in their farming, you reduce unemployment, 
by some 30 something percent, uh, you know, health care, all of these things were really being put in place, socialized and, and Grenada was coming up. And so they were the, th the threat, the sister said, the threat of a bad example. Because of course at 100,000 people with no real military to speak of, they couldn't possibly have been a threat militarily or even economically. But bad example. And they already have enough trouble with people in Castro. Now how we got another one, right? So he's gone, but we want to give him uh, props as one of our true Caribbean leaders. Uh, some of you may have known about the, the uh, Nometon, which are the Amazon warriors, the women warriors of Benin. Mm -hmm. The women warriors of Benin, at the time they were uh, uh, supporting Bahanzan. But to, to make it short, they were known for their courage in battle, primarily, of course, against the French, who uh, were colonizing Benin at the time, the Homme at the time. I should say Dahomey at the time, it's now Benin. So uh, this one I'd like to let the young sisters know that are coming through here. If you're 9 or 12 years old, you see, you're not just on the sideline in these liberation struggles. Sometimes you're in the front, you know, and if you're in the front, you can also be victorious and have a reputation of fearlessness, bravery, and uh, resolve. And I like this picture, uh, you know, uh, the lady who drew it, you know, I sent a thing to make sure she was cool with it. And uh, so I, I replicated it here. My artist did a good job. Is this the Black Panther reference? Yeah, the same wow. warrior, it is. The, yeah. No, well, this, well, the Black, the Black Panther, Panther is movie. just a movie, yeah. Yeah, but, but the, the reference but the, but the, to the female army. Oh, oh did they, the, did they? The Black Panther Have you seen it? They, I did see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I had to talk about that. Well, the warriors were women. <laughs> they were, uh, the, well, the, the guards depicted. to the king were women, uh -huh. a yeah, female yeah, army. That. So it's that's the reference. That. That's historical reference. It is? Yeah. 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 Wow. Is the guy taking the bullet for the sister? Strictly fictional. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Deeply fictional. <laughs> Preposterously <laughs> fictional. <laughs> okay. Edward Wilmot Blyden. Some of you may have heard Dr. Clark and a lot of his earlier times talking about how they had the group the Blyden Society uh, where they were studying you know some people really re regard him as the you know one of the fathers of the true pan-africanism yeah. you know coming out of St. Thomas as a scholar as a scholar going into Liberia he's also taught in Nigeria around Africa Sierra Leone and uh, the book that he's most famous for probably is uh, uh, Islam Christianity and the Negro Race where he talked about the, the cultural influences and the cultural continuities to some level between Africa, between and among African religions, Islam and Christianity. But he's um, just one of the most brilliant scholars we ever had. And he's held all kinds of posts as presidents and ambassadors of, of universities and this type of thing. Um, 